represent Canada's only world weightlifting champion. Recipient of Canada's Sport Hall of Fame and holder of at least 25 world weightlifting records. I am recognized by international authorities as possibly the strongest natural man in history, who alone, minus roids, wraps, or belts, set a standard of strength comparable to the achievements of present-day top-level strength athletes worldwide. I am now prepared to set the world record of world records by breaking a minimum of 30 world records in 60 minutes. This has never been done before in the history of any sport by any athlete. record lifts I'm about to perform comprise the same basic exercise practiced by thousands of athletes and strongmen worldwide. Numerous organizations have established internationally accepted rules of performance for each individual lift. Successful record attempts are documented as to poundage, body weight, and age classification. This demonstration of strength is presented under the auspices of the World Elite Weightlifting Association. This association will accept only lifetime drug-free athletes and will not allow any form of body support, clothing, wraps, or belt. I hereby challenge all world strength athletes of my age to duplicate the all-round series of lifts I now present. Evanco internationally approved calibrated equipment used in this demonstration assures absolute accuracy of record poundage as lifted. All foregoing lifts were performed without the advantage of initial warm-up. I wish to state here that the purpose of this demonstration is to set as many world records as possible within 60 minutes, not to lift maximum poundages. The following are excerpts of record lifts performed during my attempt to set the sports world record of world records. I will now demonstrate the one-armed military press. As the name suggests, the dumbbell is pressed to arm's length overhead whilst maintaining the body in a strict upright position throughout. The weight lifted here is 110 pounds. 35 pounds above the existing world record in my age and body weight division. Generally, only those who have paid their dues via countless hours of intensive training, absolute dedication, coupled with an extraordinary drive, are equipped to fully evaluate the depth of their accomplishment or that possessed by others of similar ilk. Unfortunately, most linguistic aficionados of heavy athletics Lacking empirical knowledge may find themselves wanting when involved in comparative evaluations. Some may conclude from this to quote an old saw that it takes one to know one. Nowadays, competitive evaluations are established strengthwise between past and present strongmen, excluding drug involvement, negating the possibility of conclusion, thus undermining the credibility of sport. Presently, the situation in this regard is completely out of hand, and confusion is the order of the day. I must confess that a considerable number of top-level contemporary strongmen may be complimented for their courage, although misdirected, 
As these modern kamikazes, perhaps unknowingly, are preparing to make the supreme commitment to their sport, they are, as I have been given to understand, ready to die for it. The process of attrition via aging is accelerated in proportion as to the degree of abuse tolerated by the body throughout life. Generally, it will suffice to say that abuse incurred by ingestion of those substances injurious to the body will culminate with the premature expiration of those athletes presently involved. I feel that we can expect that such an event will occur in mass in approximately 30 years. Generally speaking, I suspect that the only genuine record athletic endeavors are those performed prior to the advent of anabolic substances. Unfortunate indeed are athletes presently competing who must face the specter of credibility. Extensive research has disclosed that anabolics were known and utilized in the early 50s. Thereafter, the prevalence of usage increasing dramatically unto the present day. I have, upon request, received information from a foremost authority concerning the extensive bodily damage caused by the injection of anabolic substances. In short, the answer received stated, the amount and length of usage is confirmed by the degree of organic damage it is further stated that the said damage is irreparable. It seems that the possibility of a complete eradication of strength-enhancing drugs from present-day athletics brings to mind the phrase, jousting at windmills. To resolve this dilemma, to resurrect and preserve the sanctity of sport in our modern world, we are perforce obliged to call a spade a spade by establishing a criteria consisting of an internationally monitored elite division of athletes. Those individuals engaged in heavy athletics throughout their lives who have subjected themselves to none or negligible drug abuse will normally display the highest level of strength in their later years. Unfortunately, such individuals are a rarity as evidenced in the master's division of world weightlifting organizations. Extensive examination of documented record lifts and number of competitors shows an abrupt drop commencing in the 55 to 60 years and thereon divisions. The fundamental purpose of this tape is to outline a procedure wherein the trainee, via the application of certain principles, will attain a level of natural strength comparable to that acquired by drug ingestion. Corroboration of this is evidenced in a statement issued by the Sports Science Division of the USSR recently. Future record performances of athletes will undergo a dramatic leap in record poundages that is directly due to the implementation of mind directive involvement in training procedure. It is of interest to note that the majority of seniors holding world-class records are those who performed heavy physical labor to a late age, retaining their strength to an extraordinary degree, even onto their 70s and 80s. It is noteworthy to add here that when I won the world championships in 1953 at Sweden, I defeated champions from major countries, the majority of which were strength enhanced by steroids. At that time, being isolated in Vancouver, Canada, I was not aware that steroids existed. An incident comes to mind wherein during a discussion with a professor of genetics, 
I mentioned that I had set approximately 25 all-round world lifting records that were considerably in excess of those previously established. This overall gap that I set is in all probability the greatest ever attained in all-round natural strength. I then asked the professor if he could explain how I had managed to accomplish this. Without hesitation, he replied, I haven't got the slightest idea. All I can say is that numerous known and presently unknown factors came together in a most favorable manner. I clearly remember an occasion when I was having a discussion with a group of doctors in respect to how I acquired such an extraordinary level of strength. In answer to their questions, I mentioned diet, rest, and other basics of strength building. As I was answering, the doctors kept repeating, we know all of that. How did you do it? At first, I did not realize the meaning of their answer. And it took some time before I fully understood the depth of their statement. I then realized that there were underlying factors prompting my actions that were not fully understood by the doctors. Was it possible that I knew the answer that the doctors could not explain? If so, it meant that I would have to undergo a period of self-examination in the hope that I could unearth the truth. A considerable period of time and self-examination revealed a procedure when implemented formed a workable formula expressly designed to promote the realization of ultimate natural physical strength to a point of equaling or exceeding strength acquired via drug usage. It would appear, according to the opinion of a rapidly increasing number of worldwide knowledgeable authorities, that my establishment of all round record lifts before the usage of anabolic substances stands alone in the world of strength. When training to set a record lift, it is of vital importance to visualize a procedure in all aspects from beginning to completion and vice versa. In other words, one must also comprehend in detail the procedure from the point of setting the record to the point of starting the training program. This is accomplished by utilizing the principle of mathematical projection. Those individuals presently not utilizing this principle are prone to the loss or limitation of a sense of direction. Such an oversight may be similar to trying to fly across the Atlantic with 20 gallons of gasoline in the tank. The primary purpose of projection is to assure that the record, world or otherwise, is within the ability of the trainee. Projection also acts as a fail-safe warning when failure to increase the required preset repetition gain is experienced. This pre-warning signal indicates that a fault exists somewhere in the overall training regimen. In this way, the fault is exposed at the early stage of the extended routine. It must be kept in mind that uninterrupted single repetition advancement represents the key to ultimate success, and that the cause of failure to increase the said repetition is rarely found within the actual workout program. If the cause was within the workout program, the poundage increase can be reduced to suit the trainee's capability strength-wise, thus reestablishing continuous progression at the early stage of the projected routine. The principle of single repetition advancement is the keystone governing strength building as progress is achieved in balance with the body's ability to build and recuperate. The trainee can now progress without failure. This in turn develops a very high degree of confidence. A failure to succeed with the poundage increase is never experienced. In other words, the gain of strength is not to be hoped for, it is to be expected.
The first lift I'm going to perform is the two-arm overhead military press off the rack. The present world record is 181 pounds. I'm going to attempt to do 188 pounds. I'm now going to perform the two hands pressed behind neck, off the rack. The world record ponies I'm going to attempt to do here is 154 and a half pounds. The next lift I'm going to perform is the one-arm military press with a dumbbell. The world record is 65 pounds. I'm going to attempt 102 and a half pounds. The next lift I'm going to attempt to set a world record in is the one arm cheat curl. But I'm not going to cheat, I'm going to try and do this in a strict style. The weight on the bar is 67 and a half pounds. I want to point out here first that the lifts that I'm doing here are lifts that I've never done before in my life. I don't even train on them. I haven't trained on them even now for this demonstration. It's just natural strength. And also I want to point out that I'm setting all these records in the over 70 year age class, in the seniors. And my body weight division is 108 kilos. You ready? Yeah. This lift that I'm going to perform now is the one arm dumbbell snatch. I have to pull the, the dumbbell from the floor to overhead in one movement. The 81 and a half pounds is on the dumbbell, which is a world record. I want to point out again that I don't train in these lifts, but I can do them, I guess, anyways. Uh, the lift I'm going to attempt now is 253 pounds uh, for a world record. Uh, I must confess that I haven't trained on the bench for about one year. I've been busy with all these other lifts. Uh, I have to, the rules state that I have to do this lift with my feet off the bench up in the air, which makes it a little bit more difficult. Uh, so I'm going to attempt, like as I said, 253 pounds for a world record. I'm going to attempt a world record in the, uh, the bench press with the hands together. Uh, the world record that I'm going to try and attempt is 165 pounds. Oh, 
that goes. At the age of 54, after a lengthy layoff from heavy lifting, I set about to establish a number of records in the master's division of world competition. My reason for this is that I wanted to test the effectiveness of the training principles outlined in this tape series in regard to senior athletes. The results I attained were considerably more than I expected, 
As a matter of months, I was approaching a level of strength I had attained as a young man. My body weight increased from 215 pounds to 217 pounds, and my top lifts in training were as follows. Olympic press, 390. Two hands curl, 220. Bench press, hands together, 370. Squat, 600 pounds, eight reps. At this point, I became aware of the need for a form of overall nutrition based on an increased efficiency of absorption so as not to overtax the bodily digestive process. You ready? It is to be accepted by the senior trainee that generally speaking, the digestive organs of athletes engaged in heavy athletics aged 55 and thereon via the process of aging are incapable of utilizing large amounts of heavy foods as they could at a younger age. I believe that overconsumption of high concentration foods or supplements will eventually prove injurious to the body. The same result can be attained consuming liberal amounts of food in natural form daily when coupled with the extended correctly programmed heavy weight training. I use this procedure to attain a muscular body weight of 315 pounds with strength comparable to that produced by anabolics. I further refine this principle into a workable, detailed addition to my overall strength building program. This program will be explained in detail in the forthcoming Anatomy of Strength series. Much of the foods presently consumed by the general public are rich or enriched beyond the toleration of the body. And if ingested over a lengthy period, will inevitably lead to sickness. Many of these foods cause an unnatural stimulation, which is misinterpreted by most as a healthful sign. In the long run, however, such foods cause premature aging, enervation, and loss of strength. It is my firm belief that the human body is the end result of a vast period of evolution. During this period, generally speaking, the external environment of the body provided food substances. In a natural, unconcentrated form, thus the body developed in harmony with these natural foods. Modern man, with his technology, has intervened this process with a myriad of nutritive products in highly concentrated form, unsuited to the metabolic function of the body. This in turn results in high toxicity, upsetting the natural balance of bodily function with serious consequences. If this condition is not counteracted, using only natural measures, at this later age in life, a severe and continuous drop in strength and muscular size will be experienced. Nutritional needs assume a more prominent aspect of strength building in one's later years. It is of vital importance that sufficient energy is available to enable the senior to undergo concentrated and strenuous athletic movements while still retaining a sufficient reserve of energy to offset exhaustion. It is to be remembered that lasting muscular strength is dependent upon the overall organic strength of the body. As a matter of fact, the degree of life, long physical strength, is basically the product of one's mental and moral makeup. A true strong man should retain his strength unto a very late age in life even unto his 90s. The acquisition of exceptional physical strength for a brief five to 10 year period in one's life does not denote a true strong man. You may be surprised to hear that prior to my attaining the pinnacle of world strength, that the major part of my diet was whole milk and bananas, lots of fruit, and basic carbohydrates such as potatoes, rice, and pasta, 
which I force-fed myself constantly throughout my waking hours. Alternating from carbos to fruit and milk, I distinctly remember the day that I increased my body weight eight pounds in this manner. Of course, this regimen of heavy eating was coupled with lengthy periods of very extra heavy weight training, at least five times per week. During the training periods, I continued to consume ample amounts of milk and bananas. I wish to state here that throughout my strength building career, I consumed very little meat or fish. I did, however, eat a minimal amount of eggs, powdered milk protein, and soy protein, which were prepared in liquid form in a food blender. Frankly, I am convinced that flesh foods and eggs, although high in protein, are highly toxic. And for this reason, I avoided these products throughout my involvement as a senior master lifter. Toxicity accelerates aging, which in turn decreases strength capacity, especially so with seniors. It seems that increased food intake assists the younger strength athlete but will restrict the overall progress of the senior master lifter in the long run. The younger lifter having a more efficient digestive system is able to tolerate toxicity even to middle age, but from that point on will suffer the consequences unless the diet regimen is strictly altered. People as they aged are inclined to justify their increasing lack of strength ability strength-wise or otherwise to increasing age. This, however, is not entirely the case, as they overlook the possibility that much of their condition could be due to a temporary bodily malfunction due to their lifestyle. Most individuals as they age succumb to the armchair and TV syndrome, justifying their incapacity to age. A wise man said, the human being is the only animal that won't face facts. Perhaps so. When approaching senior status, one is to expect an increased degree of stiffness and soreness. This is to be accepted as a natural process. Stiffness leads to joint soreness, but this can be counteracted to a considerable degree via daily stretching of basic bodily parts. Performing full movements in basic weight training exercises. Deep squatting, dumbbell fly, stiff-legged deadlifting, etc. If this daily procedure is discontinued, even temporarily, the senior lifter will quickly lose flexibility, and if the period of layoff is prolonged, the senior lifter will experience considerable difficulty in retaining it. It follows then that in the case of seniors approaching the 60 to 70 category or earlier, that daily training and stretching is mandatory. Otherwise, a condition of the inability to lift competitively or otherwise will occur. One of the major reasons why senior strength athletes discontinue heavy training is that a continuance of heavy exercise at a later age contributes to soreness and stiffness. There is simply no way to overcome this problem. Everybody will face discomforts as they age, whether they exercise or not, so why not be stronger and healthier? and accept this mild discomfort. It is my opinion that the aged magnify aches and pains that they would have shrugged off in their youth. Many of the elderly are prone to self-babying, most probably due to the fear of injury or sickness. This is a one-way street to becoming an invalid. To rest is not to conquer. We need to have more faith in this wonderful machine our body represents. With correct application, your body can perform to a level beyond your wildest dreams. The human body is a lot tougher than we give it credit for. 
It is my considered opinion that in order to remain active in good health and to have an extraordinary degree of physical strength, even unto the 80s, 90s, and 100s, it is essential to deviate from the so-called norm of our society. Our present lifestyle normally provides a life expectancy in the vicinity of 65 to 73 years. It is interesting to note that the majority of insurance companies try to avoid stating the maximum life expectancy figure for numerous reasons which I will leave to your imagination. It is my conclusion from this, logically speaking, that the best our present technology offers to our average citizen is 65 to 73 years of life. I further conclude that perhaps a deviation from our normal lifestyle, if properly implemented, could present the possibility of a life extension of at least 10 to 20 years beyond the present norm. If so, this allows for a reassessment strength-wise of our potential as a senior lifter. No amount of anabolic substances will enable a 100-pound woman to deadlift 800 pounds, and yet the body has this inborn capacity via induced excitation. There are, on record, numerous instances to verify this, and it is interesting to note that very few, if any, receive serious injury from their Herculean effort. One may speculate here as to just how much a heavyweight lifter could elevate should he be in the state of the pre-mentioned 100-pound woman. Mankind is on the brink of a new era or an exploration of the natural potential inherent within the human body will reveal capabilities that will surpass by far our present ability strength-wise. The Anatomy of Strength series reveals, in minute detail, the exact procedure to tap this presently unrealized vast reservoir of potential. Just recently, medical science has become aware of the fact that the human body has within itself the capability to produce any substance to eliminate every disease known to man, providing, of course, that the individual affected is mentally and physically equipped to activate the bodily immune process. Natural herbal compounds present the answer to producing the highest level of the entirety of bodily function safely throughout life. I maintain that for every disease known to man, there exists an appropriate herbal remedy. Longevity is extended via regular daily herbal ingestion. According to documented evidence, numerous individuals have lived upwards from the age of 140 years to 200 years, which can be directly attributed to daily intake of herbal mixtures. It may interest the viewer to know that I am a vegetarian, and I have been for the last 20 years. I believe that I have disproved the fallacy that it is essential to consume non-vegetable products in order to develop extraordinary strength and muscular size. I must also say here that a goodly amount of my muscle bulk and strength is directly due to herbal intake. I think the most important thing of all is the strengthening of the body's immune system through herbal ingestion which could allow those of life's later age to bypass the numerous diseases that attack the elderly, thus allowing the senior athlete many more years of active participation in sport. There is no reason whatsoever why men of 90 and over should not be elevating creditable poundages. Minor or major drug usage weakens the immune system, leaving the body defenseless to the attack of cancer and numerous other level diseases. This is, to a great extent, why there is an abrupt drop in competitive athletics over the age of 60 and thereon. When the immune system is impaired, the aging process of the body is accelerated, causing a substantial lowering of life expectancy. What a price to pay for a few brief years of the addition 
of artificial weightlifting strength. After a lengthy period of continuous alteration of the sets, reps, etc., within the actual training routine, I have perfected what I believe to be the ultimate strength building routine. In short, this routine is the only one that allows a continued increase in strength to a late age in life. This routine involves correct warm-up procedure, number of weekly training periods, and all other aspects essential to progress. My experimental investigation brought to light many new or perhaps overlooked functional aspects of strength building. For instance, I became aware that shortened muscle memory retention is a factor of aging and that it is essential that various exercises must be performed with later repetitions up to 70 or 80 percent of maximum effort daily to prevent this problem. The exercises would vary from day to day in accordance to the overall exercise program. All this and other functional aspects of strength building are explained in detail in Strength Building for Seniors via VHS video cassette series. It is extremely important not to expend the entire reserve of energy during the training period. If this principle is not followed, in a very short time, a state of exhaustion will occur, and if not immediately counteracted, will lead to chronic exhaustion, which could be a permanent condition thereon. Yeah. Good lift. Get her. Will the viewer please note here a correction on this tape? My weight increased from 215 pounds to 270 pounds, not 217 pounds. When it is all said and done, I believe that the heart of the overall strength building procedure is the building block, the single rep gain. I am not, I repeat, I am not referring to three, four, or five rep gains because this attitude of mine leads to disorientation, hence ultimate failure. To achieve ultimate concentration, hence ultimate capacity strength-wise, the said concentration has to be pinpointed on a single thought or thing. The thing chosen to be pinpointed should be the heart of the procedure utilized to attain a defined goal. In this case, it is the one rep addition to the total number of reps performed in your previous workout. This applies to each and every exercise performed in each and every exercise period. For example, if you did five sets of four reps in the squat with the same poundage in each set in your previous workout, your forthcoming squat workout you would do one set of five reps and four sets of four reps. By enlarging this concept, as you will see, the same principle functions in respect to a future record lift desired. However, in this case, the explosive buildup is much more powerful, capable of producing in weight elevated a 30 to 50 pound increase. Concentrating on the single rep gain and, and of equal importance, the date that the pre-mentioned rep gain, especially a record competitive lift, will be accomplished, activates a storehouse of built-up energy. When released, forms a kind of explosion similar to steam pressure in a boiler. The explosion will be proportionate to the degree of built-up mental concentration. From time to time, both the young and especially the senior lifters should undergo what I call a crash training program of short duration to shock the trainee out of a mental and physical rut. This program is centered on the concept of reestablishing the feel of heavy poundages. Seniors especially 
drift toward the tendency to perform high numbers of lightweight repetitions. Comfortable, yes, but as a real strength builder, a flop. How many seniors have followed this type of training and upon looking back in their training notebooks, regardless of how well they think they feel, their limit poundages in all lifts have dropped 10 to 15 percent. This is the beauty of weightlifting. You just can't fool yourself with a barbell. It is my conclusion that high sets of high reps with a fairly heavy weight is unsuitable for strength-oriented seniors as it brings about the chronic fatigue at the first stage of an extended program and if not discontinued will result in a state of complete exhaustion. This is caused by the inability of seniors to recuperate from each succeeding workout session. Younger lifters do not normally suffer from this program due to their superior power of recuperation. From the age of 60 to 70 years, I underwent numerous variations of training procedure. As my age increased, I found that in order to retain my strength or improve it, I was forced to condense my routine to short, intense training sessions, either daily or every second day. I commenced each with a series of triple warm-up reps, increasing the poundage, then to single reps, working up to a limit or near limit poundage. The intensity of the workout depended on just how I felt at the time, physically or mentally. Always leaving the workout with energy to spare. On certain days, if the spirit moved me, I would attempt to lift which could have been beyond my capability. On numerous occasions, I succeeded. It was then that I began to see more and more the power of mind and realized regardless of age, you can lift any weight you believe you can lift and with impunity. It is important, however, to remember that your belief, if it is to be effective, is substantiated by tangible reasons or evidence to show that your state of mind is not the product of flights of fancy. Much of the training performed by seniors should be instinctive. However, if you are on the wrong track, you're in trouble. Very possibly, it would be best at this point to seek the guidance of an individual who has pioneered the way and has credibility. I have found that the tendons and ligaments retain their strength far longer than muscular structure in later years. It follows then that the proposed senior program of training routine should be oriented on series of low number heavy reps for maximum strength. As the strength inherent in tendon ligament composition can only be developed via extra heavy poundages, it may well be that the heavy single repetition represents a breakthrough in senior strength building procedure. I further maintain that the amount of energy expended via the series of heavy reps is less enervating than subjecting oneself to sets of lightweight high repetitions, hence minimizing the possibility of the exhaustion that seniors are oft times prone to. Generally, seniors, as well as the young, will find it easier to develop leg and back strength than upper body power. It may be that the superiority of seniors' leg and back strength is that irregardless of discontinuance of constant training, the senior is obliged to motivate his body via the hips and legs throughout life. Another factor the senior should consider is the portion of the day devoted to training. Seniors, as explained, have a diminished power of recuperation. It would follow then, as I have experienced, that dissipation of energy throughout the day should prompt the senior to train in the early portion of the day so as to obtain maximum benefit from the reserve energy supply. <clears throat> I have found that I am 5 to 10 percent stronger during the day's earlier hours as verified by my strength level. A vital point I wish to make here, one I feel I should mention again, is that drug usage 
An incorrect diet weakens the body's immune system. The young may benefit from the body's ability to some extent to counteract this for a brief period of time. Not so in the case of those of a later age, which is evidenced by increased aches, pains, sickness, etc., which is misconstrued as the product of aging. Great and lasting strength acquired normally or naturally requires a high moral conduct. All these coupled together make the true strong man. Others who acquire strength by artificial means exist on a temporary basis and cannot be maintained throughout life. Those who attempt to prolong their strength artificially are on a one-way street, eventually ending in serious disease. It seems as one ages, there is an increase in mood fluctuation. It is almost as though the drive derived from a positive attitude is brought about in a manner similar to recuperation from a training session. A break or a rest is vital for seniors if one is to put forth a good effort to better one's level of ability strength-wise. <laughs> This mood fluctuation can be counteracted to a positive state of mind via concentration or meditation. In other words, if you concentrate on a positive thought, you become positive in your actions, weightlifting or whatever. Again, in reference to liquefied foods and its assistance to seniors, due to the lower ability of the digestive system, development or retention of overall bodily strength is impaired. Seniors attempting to overcome this problem via increased overloaded food intake will cause sickness. Forcing a discontinuance of training, sometimes permanently, on the other hand, attempting to overcome this problem through the use of stimulants and concentrated food substances eventually ends in a high toxic condition, resulting in sickness and again discontinued training. Luckily, there is an answer to this problem and as far as I can see, the only answer, daily consumption of liquid foods. second demonstration of the two world record lifts, the poundage was seated press behind neck, 165 pounds, and the two hand curl, 160 pounds. Again, in reference to liquid food intake, the benefits are, liquefying removes a major work part of the digestion. Foods in liquid form assist absorption especially so with seniors. Convenience of preparation in many variations of flavor, etc. This also applies to prepared soup mixes presently on the market. As a senior, I have found on certain days that I'll back off from heavy poundage force reps even if the routine calls for it. Your body language may tell you that everything is not quite right, on these hopefully rare occasions, I will undergo a lighter load workout and hit the bypassed heavier routine within one or two days. It is to be remembered, however, that you can't make a habit of this procedure, but it has its purpose if used correctly. Of course, I must admit that constant low rep weight training is not the most conducive to the improvement of the circulatory system. However, I feel that this shortcoming can be overcome by short distance jogging or bike riding. A pleasant break, I may add, from the rigors of heavyweight training and especially good for the temperament. Those seniors approaching the 65 to 70 years bracket and thereon should periodically undergo training sessions using only sets of increased repetitions. 
This procedure should be followed for a period of two weeks every two or three months. Okay? The principle here is that such a procedure revitalizes the trainee mentally and physically rather than to lay off altogether, causing a substantial drop in the strength level. This principle is applicable to the younger athlete and it is suggested that they also should follow the pre-mentioned procedure from time to time as they say, a change is as good as a rest. Seniors especially must avoid overtaxing themselves too frequently when training as this shocks the nervous system which must recuperate from this. In the process, nervous disorders can occur evidenced by indigestion, insomnia, lowered resistance to colds, and worse. This subject and its correction is covered in detail in training for senior weightlifting and powerlifting in Anatomy of Strength video series, tape four. At this point, I wish to discuss what may be, from the physical standpoint, the vital component involved in the quest for long life coupled with extraordinary physical strength. The body's immune system is the most important thing. There are many factors regarding this concept that I believe to be true. From the moment of birth and before, the body is subjected to constant attack from the external environment in a life or death struggle. The pollution of earth, ever increasing in a multitude of forms, is tipping the scale in favor of the external attack. Fortunately, Mother Nature has provided the means of counteraction for those willing to act now. Or I believe if we hesitate in a very short period of time, it will be too late. The counteraction, of course, in order to overcome this situation is of a preventative nature involving an alteration, especially in our living and thinking habits. At the age of 65 to 70, after many variations of strength building procedure, in my workouts, utilizing trial and error, the single rep system combined with heavy low rep warm-ups of two to three reps remained foremost in regard to substantial progress. All other systems, as far as I am concerned, fell by the wayside. I arrived at my conclusion via an intuitive process as it seems I have always done in respect to strength building matters. A diversity of strength enhancing procedure and exercises within the workout period detract from concentration, especially so in the case of seniors, causing a lessening or elimination of further progress strength-wise. I suppose one could say that the single rep system gets you the most results with the least amount of energy expended. They say a change is as good as a rest, and this advised alteration in strength building can snap you out of the doldrums, moving you up to ever higher poundages. It is to be remembered, however, to warm up with lighter poundages, three reps, three or four sets before starting the single repetitions. When I was younger, I was capable of performing multi-repetitions with heavy poundage. I found, however, that when I reached the vicinity of 60 years and thereafter, such a training procedure quickly led to fatigue and staleness. I later realized that this condition was due to lack of recuperative ability, which continues in greater severity as age increases. When preparing to increase a personal record or records, the senior, should he have the opportunity, can consider training twice per day for a short period, concentrating on only one individual lift. This procedure can provide the possibility of lifting more heavy poundage without extreme fatigue, thus allowing for a higher record poundage on a variety of strength lifts. Again, I wish to point out that high rep training with extra heavy poundages can irritate joints with seniors, even so in the instance of juniors, especially if they are involved with anabolics 
as this promotes an unbalanced relationship between joints, tendons, and muscles. Okay. Sometimes an increased series of lighter rep warm-ups, especially regarding seniors, can assist psychologically when building up to heavy low reps and singles when following an extended regimen of training prior to competition, especially so if one is prone to staleness. Another approach that I have used with great success in your competitors is pushing poundage to the point of failure after a series of increased low rep warm-ups. I discovered when doing this and dropping back to lower semi-heavy poundages for three to five reps that I could perform more reps than when I did not push to failure beforehand. I really feel that the reason for this was mostly mental, causing the weight to feel lighter due to a more confident attitude. Seniors especially lose confidence very quickly if they are not exposed to heavy poundage every two or three days on each different lift. Most seniors, as well as the younger, can lift more than they think they can lift. All you have to do is push the right button. A note of caution for seniors using the single rep system. Do not overload the single rep poundage. And it is recommended to train on this system not more than three times per week. It is of ultimate importance, however, to keep on with regular doses of heavy reps. If you don't use it, you lose it, my fellow senior. Seniors especially are subject to frequent mood vacillation. That is, shifting back and forth from a positive to negative attitude day to day. This occurrence becomes more pronounced as age increases, and if the trainee lacks determination and sufficient willpower, it is very possible that a permanent discontinuance of heavy training will ensue. Irregardless of the goal anyone wishes to attain, one must believe wholeheartedly that that goal can be accomplished. If so, this attitude of mind sets into motion all the factors known or unknown to attain that goal. It is better to fail with a record or near record poundage than to miss with your so-called middle of the road attempt. So from time to time, try a weight above your previous best. As a senior, you may receive a pleasant surprise. At a certain time in a competitive senior's life, if the senior wishes to continue on competing, or for that matter training, to a very late age in life, there is one way, and generally one way only, that the senior will be able to realize this accomplishment, and this strictly involves an alteration to a lesser or greater degree of thinking, diet, and the absolute adherence to a daily intake of a variety of herbs, and herbs alone, <coughs> that are suited to the individual need for the maintenance of strength and health. The continuance of heavy training to a late age in life is not entirely due to willpower. In other words, at this point in life, if you can't make your training routine enjoyable, you will eventually quit. The right system of training is not to have a set system of training. Rather, you must make it a game which stimulates and satisfies. Again, just make a point of devoting so many hours per week to your training. In this manner, you are bound to get results. Be satisfied with this. There is no use of being in a state of constant frustration, as you will eventually begin to dislike your training, and this is the beginning of the end. You will experience good days and bad days, as this becomes more pronounced as you age, but in the overall picture, you, at the least, will hold your strength. This in itself is a great accomplishment. Try and avoid any kind of negative thought. Negation influences excitation or your degree of motivity. This alone can disrupt your entire training regimen, which in turn decreases or eliminates progress. Reassessment of thinking and resultant living habits brings about a regeneration of mental and physical strength which to a lesser or greater degree 
surmounts the effects of aging, reversing the so-called normal expectation of life potential of the human body. Everybody has this capability if they should care to take advantage of it. An alteration in the way you think or reason begets an alteration in the way you feel. You could say that correct thinking, acting, and exercise are in the same family. Think young and become young should be the motto of every senior. Remember, any form of mental block will prevent progress. In a way, even the composition of your thoughts have a direct bearing on the amount of effort you can put into the elevation of your training poundages. Another factor involved with lack of motivation is mental staleness. This can be as serious as staleness from overtraining. This situation is usually brought about via incessant training or simply on set physical demanding routines over lengthy periods of time. As they say, a change is as good as a rest, or a break is as good as a rest. This problem is more pronounced in seniors as seniors have a diminished degree of potential factors to stimulate and encourage continued interest in many exercises. The young receive a far greater degree of stimulation or drive to push themselves physically so as to aspire socially in their fields of interest. Attrition via aging decreases the efficiency of the entirety of the internal organs, thereby bringing about a severe depletion of bodily buildup and reserve of energy. To compound this problem, the retention of potential energy can be quickly exhausted via the drain of minor daily activities coupled with disturbances. In short, the lack of the ability to get up and go now reaches the proportion of a major pitfall. Even to those seniors who have the desire and determination to continue on with their regular heavy athletics. I have found that those 60 to 65 years and over can endure short duration poundage daily workouts for a maximum of three to five days in succession without over, I'll try it again. I have found that those 60 to 65 years and over can endure short duration, heavier poundage daily workouts for a maximum of three to five days in succession without experiencing over fatigue, providing that the workout period does not exceed 30 minutes. An attempt to extend such workouts beyond this time period can subject the trainee to mild exhaustion. It is of a major importance than to take a two or three day rest before resuming the pre-mentioned training procedure. Can you lift it up please? A series of light warm-ups are mandatory and the importance of this procedure increases with age. In this manner, the warm-up routine is agreeable while eliminating stiffness, thus providing flexibility when approaching heavy poundages. This method makes the whole training period agreeable tending to assist the attitude of a senior towards heavy poundage. Extraordinary thinking, properly directed, produces extraordinary lifting. Natural food substances, especially herbal compounds, assist greatly in replenishing bodily energy and should be taken advantage of, especially so with seniors. If correctly used, they will not impair the immune system of the body. I've been led to believe that this is not the case with unnatural preparations presently in use by the general public. Basically, what the herbs do is stimulate, regenerate, and rejuvenate bodily vital organs, thereby producing a much improved ability to assimilate foods, which in turn increases muscular strength and growth in a natural manner. And the pace of living in our modern world has become so demanding that it is having an adverse effect on the human body, causing, just to mention a few of the many disruptions, malfunction of the digestive system, nervous system, and last, but certainly not least, the immune system. All these shortcomings play havoc with the regeneration of bodily energy. As I mentioned, those 60 to 65 years and over can endure only short duration, heavier poundage daily workouts for a maximum of three to five days. Although it is fair to say here that some of the pre-mentioned age will be incapable 
of adhering to a five-day workout program for any substantial length of time. You will note that throughout this tape, I touch upon variances of training procedure which may appear to contradict other statements. I have made especially so in the instance of seniors. This is not the case as there just isn't just one way for everybody. The way is to know, I repeat know, when to implement the right procedure at the right time. The gains will come of their own accord. The degree of variance in the way that seniors feel and think from day to day considerably more than that of younger individuals. The main thing, however, is the seniors' uninterrupted continuance of training by applying the correct routine at the appropriate time. Then the gains will come of their own accord. It is my intent to set down all alternate routines to my knowledge within this tape. Basically, a young man retains his day-to-day -day balance of mental and physical ability. Therefore, those in their youth can set themselves to a strenuous and undeviating program of strength building for long periods of time. This, of course, if they are training correctly. Not so in the case of seniors who have entered what I choose to call the advanced age syndrome. In this state, there is a wide deviation of mental and physical balance day to day. It is essential then to counteract this condition with a, so as to assure continued progress. Also, the ability to train at odd times throughout the waking hours can be an asset as a greater overall amount of training can be accomplished. This especially is a decided advantage for the competitive senior strength athlete. From age 60, 65, 70 and thereon, the weakening of the nervous and immune systems result in the inability to endure long, arduous training sessions. The after effects of this condition can produce upsets of the digestive system coupled with insomnia, mild depression, to mention just a few. Again, luckily, there is a solution to the entirety of these disturbances which will be covered at length in my tape series forthcoming. Although it is essential to stay with heavier low rep training, seniors must also include at the end of their workouts one or two high rep pumping sets of 15 repetitions. This is mandatory so as to drive the greatest volume of blood to all the exercise areas offsetting one of the greatest enemies of seniors, muscle atrophy. Unfortunately, seniors lack the energy to undergo lengthy heavy workouts so as to assure total gains in all body parts, both in strength and muscle size. To offset this, the senior is forced to break up the lengthy routine into preferably daily short training sessions so that in weekly periods all aspects essential to increase muscle size and strength are covered. Viewer, please note, advanced seniors must be capable of implementing the correct routine or series of routines that will promote continued progress under all conditions, mentally, physically, or otherwise. It is suggested here, if further progress has been blocked, to contact me via phone collect for further assistance. I wish to point out here that irregardless of routine alteration, the trainee must constantly strive to increase the poundage as this represents the crux of all the programs so implemented. Whenever the trainee stops pushing himself, the weight stops moving. And doldrums can lead to discontinuance of training off times permanently. So if you don't believe it, you won't receive it. A person must train in accordance to their present condition of mind and body. Hence a series of appropriate exercise programs. It is also very important to always keep in mind that in respect to each variation of training procedure, that the comprehension of the procedure without the belief that it will work for you negates further development of strength.
Hard to show you fellas out there, both young and old, about a little thing that I invented a few years back. This thing, I believe, in certain aspects, is superior to a, a weight. I know that's terrible to say, but <laughs> you fellas are all hard rock training fellas. But I found out that this thing has a, a braking mechanism in it, and I found that when you're performing for getting arm size or muscle size, that by putting this on your, you have a dial here, of course, in which you can set the various tensions up as far as 200 pounds. Now, when you're doing a curl of this, for example, and I'll show you, you can take it, it's very portable also. You put this under your foot here to hold it down, and then you adjust the dial. Now this way, I'm getting a little bit off balance here because I've been lifting too many heavy weights here. Now, I'm doing a curl, you see? Now this curling movement here, you'll notice that when I'm doing the curl, I'm getting the pump, the full resistance of the, uh, on the, on the bicep because it's not a barbell. A barbell, there's no resistance as you pull it up. This is identical all the way through. Now when you're pump pumping with this, you can pump repeatedly, and while you're working out with it, you can actually change the, the pressure of the dial so that you can work up to a high point, set after set, and then you can start and you can work down again without stopping the pump. So theoretically, you could have a pump here that might last as long as 20 minutes without stopping. You cannot do that with a barbell. Now, the principle I want to explain here is to build muscle, the, the more muscle you can pump into that muscle, the more blood, I should say, excuse me, the more blood you can put in there, the more nutrition you bring to the muscle. So the greater the pump, the more potential for muscle size could be developed. This here definitely is an asset to a person in that one basic way for developing muscle size. I have a young man here that was doing this, and I had him do the one arm pumping every day, and the other one I just didn't, he only worked the one arm, for example, and inside of three months, the one arm that he's using the exerciser with was half an inch bigger. So I think I've proved my point. Anyway, I thought I'd show it to you. You can actually do, uh, you can do these, uh, if you turn the dial back, you can do your, 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 your deltoid work with it here. You can work from the side with it. Um, there's a bar that goes on here. And there's a foot thing here. You can hook it on there to, if you want to stand on it. The bar just slips on this way. And now you can do two arm curls like this. Now, of course, I, I, you see, I, I'd be standing on that. So you're doing, and you could do uh, upright, mo upright mo rowing. You can do uh, front squats by crossing your arms this way here and, and doing that. So you have a complete routine here and, and a little unit that'll give you up to as much as 200 pounds of resistance. So I just thought I'd show it to you. Uh, anybody's interested in this, they can uh, get a hold of me through the uh, address on the tape or uh, uh, you have my address anyways if you've ordered it. So thank you very much and uh, just thought I would show it to you.